Why did you decide to become a minister? I decided to become a minister because, well, first of all, I thought God hated me. But then one of my friends started to tell me that I was <clears throat> full of it. I won't tell you full of what, but, and he was like, he's like, you're trying to earn your salvation. And he started telling me about grace and God's unconditional love. And when I started to read the Bible really for myself for the first time, rather than listening to Sunday school teachers or preachers and things, I realized how much God loved us, no matter who we were, no matter what we did, and, and the forgiveness of, of God. And I was like, we've done something wrong here. I mean, I saw what my family went through and what other preachers went through and other families have gone through for not being forgiven or restored when they made mistakes. And I said, this is so contrary to what the gospel says and, and who Jesus is and was that I feel like I need to go into the ministry to show this part and say, where, where did we go wrong? What have, what, why have we gotten so far off track? Unfortunately, a lot of you know preachers would say, I've gotten off track. But to me, it's no. just the basic message of Jesus, you know, the red letters. Would you say that you're part of a uh, liberal sect of Christianity? Well, I definitely say I'm a little bit more liberal than probably most, yeah. You, for example, uh, the, if you're in your church, would you marry gays? If, if the law is passed, yes. You favor there being a law, though? Yes, I do. I think uh, they deserve equal rights just as much as anybody else does. And uh, I think it's, 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 a, um, it's such a big social issue right now. It, it's, it's something that really needs to be looked at and I think passed. We'll take a break. What's your take on the fundamentalist church, the evangelicals in America? Well, I think we've we've gotten a little off track. I think there's a lot of great evangelicals out there, though, too. I mean, we've got people like Tony Campolo, who's amazing, Peggy Campolo, who's amazing, Brian McCarran, Philip Yancey, Jim Wallace. And so I think there's a lot of great progressive thinkers out there right now, but also there's some of the, uh, some of the guys who are kind of old school and still worrying about fictional characters being gay and uh, pointing the fingers at people and, and almost creating a... Um, a moralistic uh, club, you know, that you have to be very moral to be in our private country club. And, and to me, that's kind of sad because Jesus said to whom will, whoever will come, you know, all have sinned, all fall short. Yeah, and uh, in the gay area, do you know why they're so adamant against the gay concept? Well, I mean, I know the arguments, I know the scriptures, um, and the scriptures are very, you could argue on them all day. Um, I believe they've been taken out of context, and I don't believe that, you know, we've, we've researched enough of the background on those scriptures, but I think it's also that we, as, as Christians, sometimes we get in the idea that we have to do something in order to be accepted by God, and that if we're not telling other people how to live, or we're not trying to live a certain way, that God doesn't love us. I think we get caught in this idea of pleasing God rather than trusting God. And I think once you learn to trust God, it's a lot easier to please God. And I think what we do is we put the cart before the horse. What's your read on the, on the Ted Haggard scandal? I feel really sad for him and his family. Um, it's unfortunate that these type of things have to happen. I think these guys get into such a place where they don't have anybody they can talk to or anybody they can go to. And so they just make huge, you know, they get this secret life going. Um, I felt like he should be restored, not asked to leave the church or kicked out. And I thought, you know, to me, it's sad when we have a decision between restoring and forgiving someone or just letting someone go. Instead, we let them go. And, and Christians seem to sweep their, their fallen ministers under the carpet. You know, we are known as the only army that shoots their wounded. And to me, that's just, um, it's so contrary to the gospel. It just really contradicts what Jesus talked about.